Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to, uh, to today's webinar. Uh, we have with us today uh, Neuberger Berman, uh, and they're here to share with us about capitalizing on the 5G megatrend. Uh, sharing uh, today is Rachel Tan from Neuberger Berman, and she's actually a client portfolio manager who's based in Hong Kong, and she's joining us today to tell us uh, more about the fund. So what is 5G and why is this you know, next generation technology connectivity uh, so revolutionary? I believe we'll learn a lot more about the opportunity that exists within today. So please help me to welcome Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Um, it's, it's very uh, nice to be here to, to introduce the 5G theme to everyone um, and to share a little bit of how we at Neuberger Berman are uh, thinking about this theme and specifically what sort of uh, investment opportunities uh, we see uh, in this space. So before I start, um, just I uh, need to read out some disclaimers. Uh, so um, just for everyone to take note, uh, this presentation provides uh, factual information about Neuberger Berman 5G Connectivity Fund, and no advice will be given about what action you should take. And nothing contained here constitutes investment advice and does not have regard to your specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. So you should seek relevant professional advice before making any investment decision. Now, that being said, uh, we can move on to the presentation. Yes. Um, so here you can see when we talk about 5G, it really is... Um, more broadly about connectivity. Uh, so 5G is, is the buzzword that we you know, hear from 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. Uh, but what we're really looking at um, and playing the trend on is connectivity. So connectivity has really evolved since the eras of 1G and 2G, where if uh, you remember, you had these huge handheld uh, devices, your mobile phones, antennas sticking out, black and white screens. And the main purpose at that point in time was to enable just, you know, human to human communication. And then when 3G and 4G came along, we moved not only advancing on the device side, uh, so we had color screen, touch screen, um, you know, very advanced uh, BlackBerry keypads, um, and then we were able to move from human to human communication to human to machine communication. So we can interact with one another through our devices, uh, you know, post comments. Uh, and this gave rise to what we know as the FANG stocks. So at the bottom, you can see um, the past winners used to be Motorola, Nokia, uh, 3G and 4G led to this massive um, rise in big tech companies, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, etc. And now with 5G coming along, what will happen is that we will evolve from human to machine communication and expanding that into machine to machine communication. And that's what we're trying to do to be able to capture the next generation winners. So on the next slide, 5G is really a key building block that's enabling a new wave of innovations. So it's not just you know, what people think when they hear 5G, just telecommunications. Um, it's, it's more about connectivity and by connecting different things together, it's enabling things like robotics, AI, internet of things, and mobility. And so the, the, the sort of range of applications of 5G is very wide and therefore brings about a lot of investment opportunities. And the next slide. What's the difference between 5G and 4G? Um, obviously, number one, you have much more connectivity. So you're able to connect a lot more devices together. And that's why we talk about things like IoT. Secondly, and obviously, uh, you have much higher speeds. So up to 100 times that of 4G. But the most critical element about 5G and why it's so game-changing is because it has a much faster response time. And some of you might have heard the term lower latency. So it really means you're able to react 
much faster with 5G technology. And so this becomes important when you talk about mission critical applications, um, things like autonomous driving, remote surgery. And here you can see a picture of a car that with 4G, uh, it would be able to, it won't be able to detect the pedestrian in front of the car um, in, in a timely manner. So you might, might get into accidents, someone might get hurt. But with 5G, you can really make sort of autonomous driving a reality because of that much faster response time and being able to detect the surroundings much faster. And so therefore, 5G is really going to be game-changing in terms of um, enabling a lot of new innovations to meet demand that is growing for better connectivity as well. On the next slide, here you can see that it's not just telecommunications that 5G will transform. It's going to impact almost all industries. And by connecting everything, it will enable a lot of meaningful growth over the next decade and more. So here you can see that from things like autonomous vehicles, which we talked about, 5G will play an important role, to healthcare, uh, where you are able to do things like remote health monitoring, which wasn't a thing until the COVID-19 pandemic, which really accelerated the need for you know, your hospital networks and, and, and to you know, monitor patients from the comfort of their home, you need to be able to have much faster connectivity. And so 5G came into play and enabled a lot of these things like connected medical sensors, um, remote health monitoring. And in the future, we would have things like remote surgery that would become a possibility. And then on, on, on the top uh, right-hand side of the diagram, you can see that even in manufacturing, uh, 5G is enabling things like smart factories, uh, where you have all your machines connected to one another, you're able to monitor your factory floors, you have sensors connected to one another to help you um, optimize and reallocate your resources. And then for consumers like you and me, what do we look forward to? You can have a lot of immersive social events. Uh, so things like the metaverse has become uh, the new um, buzzword nowadays. And the metaverse will really be uh, enabled by your fundamental technologies like 5G. So now people are having things like virtual concerts online. Uh, you're selling virtual goods. Uh, with 5G, you can have AR and VR shopping. You can have much more uh, immersive and interactive gaming experiences. And when you think about um, you know, events that are held live as well, uh, so things like your, your Olympics, for example, there's a lot of 5G technology that has been incorporated into holding these events so that the pictures that you see, for example, in the sailing event uh, in the Tokyo Olympics, uh, it's broadcasted on a ultra-wide, high-definition uh, screen. So these things are all possible because you can have sensors going around, cameras going around, connected to one another, giving you 360 degree views and um, transmitting that data at a very fast pace so you can view it live. So all these things uh, will result in a massive economic opportunity. And here you can see it's over 13 trillion US dollars expected to generate over 22 million job opportunities uh, in the next 10 to 15 years. On the next slide, here you can see uh, what we like to tell our clients is that data is now the new oil. And if data is the new oil, 5G is the pipeline. Uh, so there's really, if you look globally, a race to, to, to um, build out 5G firstly and to invest into 5G to boost a lot of the innovations uh, and growth. Uh, so countries around the world are really uh, you know, putting their best foot forward to, to roll out 5G. Um, if you look back, uh, Asia has been leading the race. So we had Korea, China, um, really kickstarting um, 5G deployment. But now, uh, even in the West, they're starting to really accelerate uh, those efforts because it's now become very much a national priority um, and a focus there. So around the world, we continue to see 5G as being uh, 
uh, a key technology for many of the nations. On the next slide. Now, 5G is a term that we've been hearing for quite some time. So some of you might ask, okay, is it too late to be thinking about 5G? Are we too late to the game? But 5G, as I said, is, is a long-term um, um, development. It's going to happen over the next 10 to 15 years. And here in this chart, you can see the, the timeline um, that is expected for 5G to be built out. And this will be done in, in, in two main phases. The first phase is you have to build out of the public network, something that we're all familiar with, right? We, we, we upgrade our uh, mobile network to 4G and, and from 4G to 5G. So a lot of the telecom operators out there are doing that. Um, now, very much so in, in Europe and, and in the US, uh, certain parts of Asia still don't have broad coverage of 5G as well. So we're still in the very early stages of phase one. And that's only phase one. Now, what happens in phase two is that this will move to private networks, which means that large corporates who need or increasingly rely on massive data transfer, they want to have connected factories, they want to have smart cities, and therefore they need a network that is very much optimized, dedicated, and secure. And that's where private networks come in. And so when we think about um, 5G, it's not going to be just affecting consumers, but also uh, on the enterprise side. And so large companies like Bosch, Siemens, etc., are already starting to build out their own private networks. And even Amazon has launched uh, a service um, called, I think, AWS Private that helps to uh, enterprises to build out their own private networks. And so therefore, the, 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 the development of 5G is really a long runway. And so when we think about investing now, it's certainly not too late. Even so, when we move to 6G, um, remember, we're still investing in connectivity as a whole. So when, when, when network um, operators move to the 6G technology, a lot of the companies that we're invested in will already be um, involved in the R&D of 6G. So on the next slide, how do we think about investing into 5G then? So when we talk about the thematic, uh, 5G thematic universe, uh, we like to break it down into three main buckets. So firstly, you have the infrastructure bucket, um, and this comprises of things like your equipment, which is required to build out uh, your towers, your small cells, which help you densify that network coverage. Uh, so when you're in, for example, a more remote area or, or in a mall, in a building, there's a lot of walls that, 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 uh, that uh, impact your signal. Uh, you need small cells to help you densify that. Data centers, increasingly important uh, uh, when you talk about things like the cloud, uh, and transfer of data, and then a lot of the optical networking that goes into high-speed um, networking within the data centers and towers. And then we have the second bucket, which is the devices, so connected devices. And it's not just your handphone. You have a lot of sensors. You have a lot of displays that go into your devices processors as the brain of your device and a lot of the other components that are required to, to have these much more advanced devices uh, in our lives. And then finally, we have what we, most of us are familiar with, the applications and services aspect of things. So you have cloud software, cybersecurity, which is increasingly important. Uh, you're able to, through 5G, have things like mobile e-commerce. You're able to watch um, um, videos, live streaming, social apps, um, and this will help you build out things like smart homes, smart cities, connected um, healthcare, etc. So the universe, when we talk about 5G, is a very broad one, and it's really beyond just uh, phones and, and, and telecoms. And so when we think about investing into 5G, uh, we think it's not going to be static. Um, there are a lot of uh, things that will evolve as the 5G cycle matures. So as you can see here, in the early stages, we would have more opportunities on the infrastructure side of things because you're building out that public network. And then when you move into full-scale 5G deployment, uh, you will see um, more opportunities arise 
asking your devices and your uh, applications and even new businesses that we, we, we don't even know today. It's just like how when 4G came about, um, the, the, before 4G or 3G, there wasn't something like um, Netflix, for example, which allowed you to, to stream live. So we expect to see new opportunities and businesses come about. And therefore, because it's not static, we think active management is a good way uh, to dynamically, you know, um, identify these hidden gems and, and be able to, to invest in it. On the next slide, uh, just to give you a brief idea of how we are looking um, or, or how our 5G connectivity fund um, is, is like, uh, we are high conviction, uh, all cap thematic equity strategy. So we typically have between 40 to 60 uh, stocks that we have in the fund. Currently, we have about 48. Um, but yet, that being said, uh, we are, um, you know, do our position sizing um, in a very uh, conviction-based manner. So typically, you would see a high conviction name between 3 to 5%. So we're not looking at outsized uh, allocations like 8, 9, uh, 10% um, typically uh, within a single holding. So our top 10 holdings typically range between 30 to 35%. Um, and we are investing across the, the market cap. So on the bottom left, you can see we have about just over 30% into small and mid cap names. Um, and that tends to be quite uh, different from other um, funds out there, which tend to be more um, on the large cap side of side of things. And, and again, we're not just investing into IT. Uh, we have exposure to uh, industries like healthcare, industrials, and we expect this to expand as the 5G um, development rolls out and matures and starts to impact more and more industries. So on the next slide, if we take a deeper look uh, into the fund, uh, here you can see the top 10 holdings, uh, the breakdown by category, sector, region. And within the top 10 holdings, you will find that these are uh, not your typical uh, IT names. Um, you know, sometimes when I talk to clients, they will say, okay, I don't even recognize, you know, 80% of the names in your top 10. And that's what we're really trying to achieve because uh, we're focusing on really the next generation key enablers and beneficiaries of 5G. So here uh, you can see it's, it's quite a uh, diversified exposure in terms of the category. So you have some uh, infrastructure names like Marvell, AMD, uh, which are in the top 10. Uh, these are you know, key uh, and leading companies that are uh, enabling the build out of the network infrastructure. Um, so for example, like uh, Marvell, it's a leading base station and data center networking company. Uh, they provide a lot of the chips uh, so they're really benefiting from the acceleration in 5G network rollout, the increasing capex that's going into rolling out 5G networks and data centers. And so this is um, a company that is really solidifying its position as, as, as a leader and a supplier of a lot of the high performance semiconductor solutions for 5G and cloud infrastructure. And then similarly, you have names like Wolf Speed. So when we talk about um, trends like electrification, renewable energy, uh, Wolf Speed is a leading supplier of a lot of the new materials that are required for, um, uh, for EVs and 5G base stations. So in particular, they have something called silicon carbide, which is a much more higher efficiency material, which allows you to um, power a lot of these power semiconductors that are used in EVs and base stations. And then we have exposure on the devices side as well. Uh, so here you can see uh, our top holding is ASM International, which is a Dutch company. Um, and it's enabling companies like TSMC, Samsung, um, by being a leading player in, 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 in something called atomic layer deposition. So it's providing a lot of the front end equipment for these semiconductor foundries. And then on the applications and services side, what we see with 5G is that it is um, really accelerating a lot of digitalization trends. And a lot of it has also been driven by um, the COVID-19 pandemic. 
um, not just on the consumer side, what we're focusing on is also on the enterprise side. So here you can see uh, names like Bill.com, HubSpot, ServiceNow. These are all um, companies that are focusing on enterprise software solutions. So if you think about um, large corporates, they have their own IT departments. They can easily um, move away from manual processes to digitalization and automation. But how about small and medium-sized uh, companies? And when you think about reopening, uh, economy reopening across the world, um, suddenly you have a surge in your business activity. For example, as a, as a say, maybe a coffee shop owner, uh, you need to be able to cope with not only your front-end sales of things. So for example, you want to attract more customers. Nobody looks at flyers nowadays. They're all on their phones, uh, looking at Facebook, looking at the adverts there. So they need, because they don't have their IT department, they need to rely on certain software solutions. So for example, HubSpot does a lot of the online uh, marketing for small and medium-sized businesses. And then not only front-end stuff, how about your back office? So in terms of payments, in terms of invoicing, uh, you need a lot of that is still very much manual. And so small and mid-sized businesses are looking at ways to digitalize that whole process. And therefore, you have players like Bill.com, which come in to offer this software as a service to help automate and digitalize the back office uh, financial and operational side of things for, for these SMBs. So we are invested into you know, these sort of um, companies uh, really driven by 5G uh, trends. So on the bottom left, you can see we have quite a, a good split in terms of the three categories. Uh, infrastructure, about 35%. Devices, uh, about equal. And then application services, just under uh, 30%. And then in terms of sector mix, uh, we are uh, overweight on semiconductors. So we have an exposure of uh, just over 40% there. Uh, we have some software names, uh, but as I said, beyond just IT, we have um, exposure to healthcare. So connected medical centers, connected monitoring solutions and industrial uh, names as well. And on the bottom right, you can see that in terms of region mix, uh, we are um, quite different as well. So we don't have your typical 80, 90% into US names. Uh, it's just under 70% there. Uh, and we have uh, some uh, good exposure, about 25% to Asia um, companies, Asian domiciled companies. So on the next slide, here you can see uh, the performance. So um, I won't go into too much detail there, uh, but we have managed to uh, deliver uh, reasonable returns uh, over the long term uh, since inception in 2020. And the next slide. Uh, some of you might ask, what's the, what's the outlook um, for us, uh, especially given the volatility in the market uh, so far this year? Uh, what we're seeing is that the 5G theme is, is actually strengthening uh, because when we look at the companies or the 5G related companies, earnings power is, is rising. There's a lot of capex going on. And as I said, um, are not slowing down in terms of their 5G deployment, especially in the US and, and Europe. So a lot of investment is still going on uh, into 5G. However, when you look at volatility in the market, and that's really driven by uh, exogenous factors like geopolitics, um, uh, like um, inflation, rate hikes, etc. This has been driving a lot of risk off sentiment um, and a flight to watch more large cap uh, names. And so therefore what we're doing is that we're focusing a lot more on earnings quality. We're focusing a lot more on valuations. Uh, we're not uh, trying to, um, uh, we're, we're being a little bit more uh, cognizant of, of valuation and keeping our valuation discipline. And so therefore, we have actually reduced some of exposure to higher multiple names, and these tend to be uh, within your software uh, names. 
And so what has, has helped us this year is that we have exposure to cybersecurity, which has become a huge uh, topic, especially with the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. So our cybersecurity exposure has done well. Uh, enterprise cloud software, as I mentioned, is also uh, contributed well to the fund. Um, and high performance semiconductors. So for example, like Wolf Speed, which, which, I, which I shared um, just now. So these are the areas that we are focusing uh, on. Um, the next slide. In terms of longer term outlook and catalysts, um, how are we uh, looking at some of the key themes? Uh, so firstly, we, we continue to see infrastructure spending uh, accelerating. So 5G network deployment is ramping up. This will benefit a lot of the key network and test equipment providers. So like Nokia, for example, um, instead of in the 2G era, which did a lot of handphones, they're actually now a leading player in providing a lot of the network uh, equipment to build out uh, 5G networks. And then when we think about post-COVID, uh, you have a hybrid work environment. And so you need a lot of upgrades to your infrastructure better, higher speed connectivity. And so you need a lot of the chips that involve. So companies like Marvel uh, would be involved in this too. And then secondly, as I mentioned, we, we like semiconductor space. We think semiconductors will be stronger uh, for longer. Um, and so we are invested into not just your TSMCs, your foundries. Uh, you we have a lot of, when you think about uh, increasing demand for semiconductors, uh, a lot of foundries need to raise their supply, they need to ramp up their production. And with that, it means they need more equipment. Uh, and so they need to upgrade a lot of the equipment, especially for their leading edge, you know, five nanometer, three nanometer sort of nodes. And so companies that provide these equipment uh, and testing solutions would stand to benefit from that. And then when we talk about IoT, um, Consumer IoT has been around, it's, 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 it's growing, but on the industrial side, uh, driven by electrification, renewable energy, automation, uh, you also need a lot of the next generation semiconductors. So companies like Wolfspeed will benefit from that as well. And then on the applications and services side, we're really focusing on what we call the next generation uh, 5G killer apps. Uh, so digitalization will be a mega trend as a whole. Uh, so companies that uh, are, are empowering this sort of transition would, 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 would do well. And then on the uh, metaverse side, there's also a shift towards VR and AR uh, for social, for you know, entertainment, even for industrial applications. And so we like to, to invest into what we see as the early movers uh, in, in, in this space. Um, if we flip on to maybe the next couple of slides, uh, if we go to the, um, I think slide 21. Here, just to, just to wrap up, um, I think uh, hopefully you will have seen that 5G uh, gives you exposure to a lot of the, what we call mega trends or unstoppable trends um, that we see. Uh, happening over the next few years. So things like AI and cloud, we have exposure to uh, through things like high performance computing, high speed networking, renewable energy, you know, greening the world. We also have exposure to through a lot of the um, power semiconductors, new uh, silicon carbide technologies. Uh, in healthcare, you have connected medical devices that we are invested into. Metaverse as well, 5G uh, will enable that shift towards the metaverse. And when you think about metaverse, it's really about recreating your physical world virtually. And what does that mean? It means you need a lot of high resolution. You can't be able um, to be in the metaverse and then you have a 10 second lag. Nobody will be interested in metaverse. So you need much faster, uh, low latency uh, connectivity technology, which really is 5G and, and, and beyond. And then you have digitalization. So 5G is really driving a lot of uh, digitalization trends. And so we are invested into that as well. And then cybersecurity. Why is cybersecurity linked to 5G? It's because when you think about 5G being much faster, connecting uh, multiple devices together, it opens up more endpoints for hackers to, to attack. And so cybersecurity becomes a key 
area of focus when we talk about uh, 5G. So we invested into many of the leading players uh, there as well. Uh, so on the next slide, you can see um, that our fund uh, is pretty attractive in terms of valuations, um, especially when you compare it to the earnings growth uh, potential. And here you can see it's about 23% um, EPS growth, uh, valuations still under uh, 25 uh, times PE ratio. And the next slide, just to end off uh, with the team at NB, uh, we have a very experienced team. Uh, so here at the bottom left, you can see our lead uh, portfolio manager uh, based in Hong Kong. Uh, but he's not just your typical uh, finance um, professional. He actually comes with a background uh, of a microprocessor designer for over 10 years um, in companies like Huawei, Broadcom, uh, etc. So because of that, uh, he knows the industry inside out, right? Imagine you have designed your own chips before. Uh, you already have the contacts, you understand uh, or you have a good understanding of, of the industry. And it's not just our lead PM who comes with that technical background. Many members of our thematic uh, equity research team are also engineers or have an engineer degree, have had time uh, spent um, uh, in, in, in sort of these areas. Uh, so we are able to identify a lot of the hidden gems uh, in, in our portfolio. All right, uh, with that, I suppose that we could wrap up this session. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, you've been a wonderful audience. And thank you once again, Rachel and Newberger Berman, uh, for sharing with us about the opportunities in uh, 5G. Uh, I'll keep the webinar room open just uh, for a little bit more, just so I can paste the links uh, for you. But otherwise, uh, thank you, everyone, and have a good day ahead. Take care. Thank you. Take care.